In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can make this animated lower third inside of DaVinci Fusion. It's pretty simple, so let's get into it. So first things first, inside your media pool, go ahead and create a new Fusion composition. I'm just going to make it 3 seconds. And I'm going to have a frame rate of 24, just because that's usually what I shoot in and that's what I'm going to be using most of the time. If you know you usually shoot in 30 or 60, you can just change it to that by clicking on here and changing it in there. So we're just going to go ahead and hit create. Then we'll just come over into the edit tab, drag in that fusion composition. We'll click on that and then we'll go into the fusion tab. So now inside of fusion, we're going to create a background as well as a rectangle onto that background. We'll drag that over here. I'm also going to drag that background up here so we can actually see what we're doing. So we're going to come into this rectangle here and we're just going to make it into a width and a height that we actually like. So I'm going to increase the width and decrease the height a little bit. I'm going to come back into this background too and I'm also going to change it into like a nice blue color, something like that. And we're going to click on that rectangle and we're just going to hit the rectangle button again to create a new rectangle. And this is going to end up being our mask. So we'll come over into paint mode and we're just going to hit subtract. And you want to change the width so it covers up that whole box that we just made. And real quick, I'm going to hit F2 on this and I'm going to rename it to mask. Now that we have that, we can actually start animating this. So make sure your mask is selected. Come over to the center and hit the keyframe. Then you can come over to your timeline and I'm going to go over to one second, which is going to be 24 for me since I have this on 24 frames per second. And I'm just going to move that center over so it unveils the whole thing. I'm just going to leave it right about there. And now this is animated, but the animation doesn't look very good because it's very linear. So we're going to try and change that and smooth it out a little bit. So we can come up and hit our spline window here. We'll make sure that is ticked on. And if you hit F4, that will cover up the entire bottom part there so it's a little bit easier to see. And we'll also come over and hit zoom to fit so we can see everything that we're doing a little bit easier. And I'm just going to come down here and select all of your keyframes. And if you hit S on your keyboard, that's going to smooth them out. And if you come up to this top one here, and you hit T on your keyboard, I already had it up, but if you hit T on your keyboard, you can come up to the ease in and ease out. And we're just going to make the ease in all the way up to 100. And so what that's going to do is make it go really fast in the beginning and then really slow down at the end. And that looks something like this. You can see that just looks a whole lot better than a linear movement. I'm going to hit F4 on here, and we're going to close out on that spline window. I'm going to move that media out over a little bit. Now that we're done with that, if you select everything that we just made, hit Control C, click elsewhere, and then hit Control V, we're going to make a duplicate of everything that we just did. And we're going to take our original background layer and bring it up here to create a merge node between the two. And we're going to drag that merge node in here so we can see everything that we're doing again. Then we're going to come up into our spline window again. We'll hit F4. And we're going to select our original mask that we made. We'll zoom to fit again. And we're going to select all of them. And then we're actually going to move this over just by about two frames. So that we can offset our keyframes. We'll close out that spline window again. Now I'm going to take that duplicate that we made. And I'm going to change the background color to something like a nice white. So now since we offset those keyframes, it just kind of adds a little bit of extra flair to our animation to make it look a little bit more interesting. And now we're going to create a text node. So now inside that text node, we'll just write some name. So I'll just write John Doe for the time being. We can't see our text, so we're just going to drag this down into that merge node so we can create another one and we'll drag that merge node up. And now you can see our text. I'm just going to change this text so it's going to be a little bit bigger. I'm also going to change it so that the anchor is going to be on the left side so that we can move this over to where we like to a little bit easier. And that way if you need to type a longer name, it'll go this way instead of going out from the center. So now we're just going to animate this text. So we'll come up here and click on this transform to get a transform node. And we'll be at the end of our animation, so we're at our 24th frame. So I'm going to come over and hit the keyframe on our center for that transform node. And then we'll go all the way back to zero. And now we're going to move that just out of frame. So now that's animated in like that. Except if we come over, we can see it's just kind of animated in from the side of the screen. And it's not being masked out by the background that we have. So we can change that by coming into our second mask here and dragging this mask 
down into that merge node. So now we can see that our text is only being shown inside the box that we created. And then we're going to come up into our spline on that transform for our text. We're going to unselect everything except for that transform. We'll hit F4 again and zoom to fit. We'll select all of them and hit S. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did before by selecting that top keyframe there and bringing it all the way up to 100. So now that's going to match everything else that we just did with our box. So the animation will fit in pretty perfectly. So now that looks like this. Now we can add a description to our lower third. So we're just going to make this easy on ourselves and we're just going to copy and paste the text and animation for it that we just did. We'll drag that down again to create another merge node. And we'll bring it up so we can see what we're doing. I'm just going to take that text and we'll put a description in here. And we'll scale this around so it's going to fit perfectly in our box. And we'll bring this down. And now we're just about done, but if you come over, you can actually see that our description is now going off screen. So we can take that mask again and bring that down into this merge node that we just created. And now our description is only being shown in the box that we have there. And now you can see that looks like this. And if you notice, when we scroll over here, we can actually see it's going on to the white part. So if you don't want it actually showing up on that white part there, we can unselect that mask there just by clicking on that. Then you can come over to that original mask that we made and you can bring that over into that merge layer. So now you can see our text is only showing up on the colored part we created and not the white part. And real quick, I'm gonna make sure that this merge is inside our media out. And we'll drag that media out up here. And just like that, your lower third is completely done. And you can see how it looks here. But let's say you actually wanted this to animate out as well. So without going in and changing all the keyframes that we made, we can actually go into the edit tab here and we can click on the fusion layer that we just created. We can hit copy and we'll move our playhead over a little bit and we'll hit control V to paste it. Then click on that pasted layer, right click and hit new compound clip. Just hit create Then click on it again. Then right click on that compound clip that we just created and you can come up to change clip speed and you can hit reverse speed and hit change. So now you can see if we hit play, our lower third animates in, and then since we reverse the time on the second one, it will animate out. And that's just a really quick way of getting everything to animate out. Ideally, if you wanted, you could come back into Fusion and reverse all the keyframes again, so you can set up a keyframe later on in here and then just reverse everything back out. But reversing it inside the Edit tab is just a much easier way of doing it. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.